What's up, guys? Brian Grant here of ContestChampion.com. Today I want to spend some time talking about the high-risk but very high-reward suicide masteries. And this is a subject that I don't really hear talked about all that much on YouTube. And the few times that I do hear it talked about, it generally goes something like this. Uh, suicide masteries, you know, they're, they're really good for uh, arena grinding, but for every other part of the game, they're garbage. Avoid them at all costs, stay away from them, and, and, and so on and so on, right? Um... And I get it, Suicide Masteries are not for everybody, uh, but if you are able to uh, play with the Suicide Masteries, you are going to gain rewards faster in this game. I would not have been able to progress as quickly as I have if I did not have these Suicide Masteries. So, uh, I'll be talking about, uh, you know, exactly what the Suicide Masteries entail, uh, the pros and cons, the areas that you want to use them versus the areas that you uh, would prefer not to have them, but maybe can still manage to get through. Um, in this video, and then because the subject is so big and needs, it needs uh, so much discussion, uh, I'm going to kind of break this up into three different videos so that this isn't like an hour long video here. Uh, the next video is going to talk about five different mastery builds that you can use uh, having the suicide masteries if you want to try out the build for yourself. Uh, and then finally there will be a speed test video where uh, I use an end game build of uh, having Suicide Masteries versus not having Suicide Masteries in Arena and in some very difficult quests and if I can, maybe some other areas of the game, but it's a little bit hard to test it uh, in something like Alliance Wars because you're not going up against the same opponent every time, so uh, it's a little bit harder to test in an area like that. Um, but in this first video, I do just want to kind of talk about uh, what the Suicide Masteries actually are. Uh, how they work and uh, like the pros and cons. So let's let's get right into it. Um, the the idea behind the suicide masteries is that you're increasing your character strength by a lot, by like 60% in fact. Um, but you you are taking some detrimental effects. So what what are those detrimental effects? Well, uh, they're all located in the top right corner of the offensive tree here. And starting with liquid courage, uh, you're taking a permanent poison effect for your champion, but you increase your damage output by by 30% or your your attack by 30% at least. Um, same thing for the node below it, Double Edge, where you're bleeding for the first 16 seconds of the fight, but you're also increasing your damage by 30%, and that 30% goes beyond that 16 seconds. Uh, also, if your champion is immune to bleed, you don't suffer this, this bleed damage for that first 16 seconds. Same thing with Liquid Courage, if your champion is immune to poison, you don't suffer that, that poison damage, and you still gain that 30% damage uh, increase. Um, there's one other thing about Liquid Courage here that's kind of hidden in the fact that it also reduces your healing. Uh, because it is, it is a poison effect, and that's how poison works in this game, uh, you are reducing your healing by 30% for having this mastery. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, there are other ways to get around those other than having immunities to, the, uh, to those effects, but uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. The third and by far the worst effect of having the Suicide Masteries, the prerequisite to the, the actual two good Suicide Masteries, uh, is a bad one here called Recoil. Now Recoil, it increases the, uh, the attack damage for your champion's special abilities, but every time you activate a special ability, you lose 5% uh, of your total health. And this, this is bad, right? I'm not going to sugarcoat and say like, oh, you know, it's not that bad. Um, it, it is bad. Having Recoil is bad, but there are ways to... Um, make it a little bit better. So, if you end a fight with your special ability, if when you use a special ability, uh, by the time your animation is over, your opponent drops dead, you actually don't take any damage from that special ability. Uh, not only that, but because the fights are so much faster, because you're hitting, you know, 60% harder having these suicide masteries, um, you don't have to use specials that much. Uh, in a fight where you'd have to use like three or four special abilities without the suicide masteries, if you have them, you're using uh, like one or two special abilities to end the fights. And in those cases, you know, one of those specials is gonna is gonna end the fight. Um, so you're you're taking recoil damage like zero to one time. So we're talking about like zero to five percent health per fight is what you're gonna typically be losing uh, for having recoil. So. Um, it, it is less bad than, than what it may seem, as long as you have some experience uh, playing with the ability here. Um, Alright, so how else can you can you counteract the, uh, the damage incoming from uh, Liquid Courage and Double Edge if you're not using champions that are immune? Uh, which, by the way, you can use double immunity champions here, like Ultron, who's not going to take any damage from those. Uh, or Vision, or Dormammu, or Iceman, or something like that. Um, well, you can, you can heal back some of it if you have the Willpower Mastery. So willpower, it, you gain a healing effect for each detrimental effect that your champion is suffering. So if you're bleeding and you're taking some poison damage, you're going to be healing for both of those. Um, you're not going to completely counteract the healing. If you only have one of those effects on you, you are going to be able to uh, pretty much completely uh, recover from uh, the damage that's incoming. But while suffering damage from both, um, 
you are going to lose some of your life. Uh, you're going to lose about 5% of your maximum health uh, with, with double edge here over those 16 seconds um, if you have the right masteries. And let's, let's go back to those, uh, those masteries now. Um, so you have willpower, then you also have recovery, which is going to increase that healing, uh, the recovery that, uh, that willpower is doing by 15%, so that helps out tremendously as well. Um, and you know you can get it as a, as a prerequisite to willpower even. Uh, salve here helps a little bit, although I, I, I don't like to leave it at 3 of 3 anymore. I feel like uh, because it's not a percentage based heal, um, it's not worth it to have 3 points in this, in this ability. Um, I, I feel like once you get to champions that are uh, 4 star, rank 4 or higher, then the amount of healing is, is just is just too little in my opinion. If you're using champions that are 4 star, rank 3 or lower, then salve is still a, a great pickup uh, and something definitely worth worth having. Um, there's also coagulate here which reduces the bleed damage that your champion is suffering by 30% so if we go back to that double edge here uh, double edge redu uh, er, inflicts 20% uh, of your total health over those 16 seconds but with coagulate that reduces it down to 14% uh, which again you know you're recovering most of that through willpower so it's really not that big of a deal there's also suture here which I, I've never unlocked because I've never felt the need for it um, but I do think it's a, it's a good value pickup if you want to try out um, just one point in the ability. One point reduces all bleed duration by 10% uh, versus having three points only reduces it by, you know, uh, 20%. So the, the next two levels, levels two and three, um, they really, they, they, they scale a lot worse than that first initial point. So uh, it might be a good idea to try out that first point if you're feeling like the damage is too much. Um, but I've, I've never, I've never felt the need to. I feel like uh, I have the damage, the incoming damage under control from the Suicide Masteries without having Suture. And I'd rather put that point elsewhere. So that's the basics of the Suicide Masteries. Your champions are taking damage, but you are able to recover most of it um, through through the defensive masteries. Not only that, but there are some kind of uh, hidden ways to reduce the incoming damage that uh, if you're not experienced with the Suicide Masteries, you may not initially think of. Um, and basically, it, it just comes from the fights being... Uh, so much shorter. You know, if a fight normally takes you like 60 hits to get through, well, now it's only going to take you like 40 hits to get through. Uh, and in that time, you have to bait less specials. Um, if you mess up parrying and you're taking some block damage, well, you're, guess what? You're going to be taking less block damage over the course of a fight. Uh, and if you're fighting someone like Spider-Man, who... Um, you know, the way you're going to lose to Spider-Man is you're going to, uh, he's going to evade one of your attacks and then he's just going to start pummeling you in the face until you, until you die. Um, you know, if you don't have to hit him as many times, there's less opportunity for him to evade your attacks and uh, less chance for, for death, basically. So, um, in a lot of cases, you know, yes, you are taking some damage at the beginning of the fight here. Um, and, and maybe a little bit whenever you, know, whenever you activate your special, um, but in a lot of ways you are actually uh, taking less damage throughout the fight as well. So uh, it's kind of a wash in my opinion. Um, in, in, most, in most times I'm able to uh, get, through the, get through the fights, get through an entire quest with the same amount of health that I would have had uh, if I did not have the Suicide Masteries. And here's the thing guys, even if you get through the, the entire quest without uh, having as much health, guess what? You don't get any better rewards. You don't get better rewards for finishing a quest with 90% health versus having, you know, 70% health or something like that. Um, but you are getting the rewards faster by having the Suicide Mastery. So um, that's the real benefit is that you're going to get through each area of the game much quicker. And again, this is not this is not a new concept to, uh, you know, just Marvel Concept Champions. This is something that um, I've seen in gaming for forever, I guess. Um, you know, I used to play, I, I entered a, a gaming tournament for a racing game called Ridge Racer when I was uh, very young for, for like PlayStation 1 or something like that, which is kind of strange because I don't really like racing games and I wasn't that big of a fan of PlayStation 1, but I guess the thought of entering a tournament was kind of cool. And I, I practiced a little bit and I realized that like the fastest, most wild, hard to control car got me the fastest time, right? Um, but then there was a car that was slower and had like perfect handling and I never bumped into a wall or anything like that. Uh, and, and, you know, you can get through the, 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 the course, but uh, you got through much slower. And I got nervous uh, when I entered the tournament, and I used that slower car, and I realized, like, why did, why did I do that? Like, because uh, I, was, I was scared to take some of these bumps throughout the course, um, and I, I pretty much, you know, I, I knew going into it that I was going to get a worse time. I knew, you know, so, like, equating that to this game, if you don't have the Suicide Masteries, it is a smoother ride, but... 
I know that if I'm not using them, I'm not going to get the best rewards, right? So uh, I'd rather take a little bit of risk here to gain much faster rewards. So that's kind of how I think of it. If you can equate that even to uh, other games, not not just like racing games or whatever, it's it's all games, right? Even uh, the last game I was playing before this was Hearthstone, and uh, in Hearthstone. Um, if you're familiar with that game, you know that sometimes you have to use your life as a resource. Uh, and that's the only way that you can get through the game is, you know, as long as you have one life, you start the match with 30 life. As long as you have one life, you're still alive. You're still able to uh, win, win the match, right? Um, so sacrificing a little bit of your health to get ahead in the match uh, is, is, is a great strategy. And it's the same thing in this game. So um, that's, that's basically uh, my, my thoughts about... Uh, you know, taking that risk when it comes to using the Suicide Masteries. Let's go through each area and I'll give you guys my honest opinion on whether I think that having the Suicide Masteries will help you or hurt you and you need to uh, drop the Suicides for this particular area. So, starting out with the most obvious, which is Arena, um, each fight is going to be significantly faster. Um, you have to bait out much fewer special abilities, including uh, when you're trying to get onto the infinite streak and you have that opponent that has just like that stupidest AI in the world and they kind of just like stand in your face and you can't get them to bait out their level 2 special and you're afraid to push them to level 3, you, you still have to do that having the suicide masteries, but a lot, a lot less, right? Uh, much, much less. Um, so not only is each fight faster, it's easier to get onto the infinite streak and you actually get more points per fight because uh, the Suicide Masteries also increase your champion's PI, uh, your champion's rating, significantly. Um, they, they boost your champion's rating more than any other Masteries do. So uh, in Arena, of course, it, it gets the big old thumbs up there. Uh, what about regular questing though? Because uh, people don't just play Arena, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Well, in regular questing, I feel like, uh, for the most part, Suicide Masteries are going to benefit you. Uh, in every single Master Quest that I've ever done, they've benefited me. Uh, and in, let, let's take some more of the, let's take a difficult quest in Act 4, like Slash Tires. Well, in Slash Tires, um, you take damage when you backstep, right? When you dash backwards, you take some damage. Um, but, you don't have to backstep nearly as much. Uh, if you have the Suicide Mastery, it's just because the fight is going to end that much faster. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe you backstep like once or twice um, without the Suicide Masteries if you if you play the fight really well. Um, and if you have the Suicide Masteries, it's, it's more like zero or one times or something like that. Um, you really take a lot less damage to uh, Slash Tires in that case. Um, and without any node being present, just ending the fight that much faster... I feel like is enough to balance out the little bit of damage that you are taking from the suicides. Um, so you might as well, you might as well just get get through them much faster and get those rewards quicker, right? Save some time there. A quest that might no normally take you 15 minutes to get through is only going to take you 10 minutes to get through, and now you can do something else with your time. So uh, I feel like it's it's a it's a great big help there. What about some nodes that might really uh, be devastating to the suicide masteries though? Well, the worst one by far is heal block. And with heal block on, you know, you're draining your life with liquid courage and double edge, uh, but for the most part, you're able to recover that through the willpower mastery. Uh, but with heal block on, you know, you're not balancing that out. You're not healing up with, uh, with willpower there. So um, it definitely hurts. It definitely hurts having heal block. So uh, where is heal block most, most present? Alliance quest. Um, so yes, as, as long as you're actually prepared for alliance quest, though, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Uh, the best champion by far, in my opinion, to bring to Alliance Quest is Ultron. And Ultron, whether you have Suicide Masteries or not, is is like a, is an essential champion, in my opinion. If you don't have Ultron, then yeah, drop the Suicide Masteries. But if you have Ultron, um, it's, it's best to bring him to Alliance Quest because you can take any path in Alliance Quest. You can fight any opponent, uh, including the bosses. I've even taken down the Map 6 Spider-Man bosses with my Ultron, uh, which I didn't think would be possible, but sure enough, you know, Ultron... He, he pulled through. He, he pulled through just fine, in fact. Um, what, a, what a monster, right? Um, but, yeah, since Ultron is immune to both poison and bleed, it doesn't matter that you, that you don't have willpower. In fact, Ultron can't benefit from willpower. Um, so he just gains a, a permanent 60% uh, extra attack boost. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that uh, if you, as long as you have Ultron, then having the Suicide Masteries is beneficial. If you don't have them, drop the Suicides. Uh, in any case, whether you um, have suicides or not, um, you are going to want to bring one champion that is immune to poison at the very least, and this this really helps you if you have the suicide masteries because poison is the only thing that is putting a permanent uh, damage effect on your champion, uh, whereas 
Double Edge here, it only lasts for 16 seconds, and with Cragulate you're taking 14% of your maximum health, and, and as long as you only have to use uh, that Poison Immune Champion, uh, you know, once or twice, then it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, losing 14% of your max health once or twice, it, it's not going to be something that ends your uh, your run in Alliance Quest. If it, if it was every single fight, then yeah, it'd be, it'd be far too much damage, right? But once or twice, not that big of a deal. And if you do have other champions that have double immunities like Dramamo or Iceman, uh, then you're even more set to get through Alliance Quest uh, in those cases. Um, and then you could bring one champion that uh, you don't really care about the immunities, and as long as you're not going up against a heal block node or a poison node or something like that, then, then you could use whatever champion you want in, in, that, uh, in that third slot. So for Alliance Quest, I feel like, again, if you have Ultron, Suicide Masteries gets the thumbs up. Um, what about quests like Realm of Legends, uh, uh, Road to the Labyrinth, and Labyrinth of Legends? Well, if you're using a champion like Star-Lord, then you want to drop the Suicide Masteries. It's not good to have suicides with Star-Lord, uh, because you, you're already getting so much damage just with building up your combo that the extra damage that you're getting from the Suicide Masteries, uh, you know, it, it's just like having an extra like 10 to 15 combo hits with Star-Lord. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, you're going to get that damage regardless, and I'd rather not have recoil so you could use the specials uh, more freely. Um, however, if you're using champions like X-23 or Wolverine to get through Realm of Legends, um, then it is beneficial to have the Suicide Masteries. You're not going to be using your specials anyway because you want to keep your, your power stored up, that way your healing is better. Um, so, recoil, you're, you're kind of immune to recoil in that case, right? Because you're not using your specials. And you do have reduced healing because of Liquid Courage, because of that poison effect, but for the most part, you're going to have like full health or near full health at all times anyway, and uh, I'd rather gain 60% more damage to end those fights much quicker uh, than anything. And if you're using Guillotine on Wolverine in Realm of Legends, you're only using your special, what, like two or three times in a fight? So losing 10 to 15% of your maximum health is, is not that big of a deal. You can absolutely still get through that fight, no problem. Um, in Labyrinth of Legends, Again, if you're using Star-Lord, drop the Suicides, and depending on which champion you're bringing, you might want to keep the Suicides. If you're, if you're dying to the Enraged Timer anyway, then so what if you're taking some damage? You, you, you know, uh, having, having the Suicides on might be good. It really depends on the champion that you're using, though. For, for a lot of champions, it's not going to be beneficial. For, for certain ones, it is going to be beneficial. So in that case, it you know, would be a case-by-case -case basis there. Um, when it comes to Road to the Labyrinth, it probably is a good idea to drop the Suicide Masteries for most champions. Um, Hawkeye is a good example of a champion that uh, excels in that area, and if you're using his level 1 ability constantly, you're going to be draining your health to recoil, so you probably are going to want to drop the Suicide Masteries in that case. Um, if you're able to bring someone like X-23 or Wolverine, uh, then again, it might be a good idea to have the Suicide Masteries, um, but you know, for, for most maps in Road to the Labyrinth, drop the suicides, but it's, it's a, it's a one-time thing. After you complete it, um, you know, you can, you can pick the suicide masteries back up again. So, uh, it's a case-by-case -case basis for those, those kind of specialty quests there. Um, that, that leaves us with, uh, Alliance War. Conveniently, the last thing on the list here is Alliance War, and in Alliance War, it really does not benefit you for having uh, the Suicide Masteries, especially when placing your champions on defense, because you're no longer in control of your special abilities. You know, it'd be nice if you can tell, if you could tell your champions, like, hey, don't use your special abilities until you get to, like, your level 3 special and you can kill your opponent in one shot, uh, but that's not how the AI works. Um, if you if you place your, your champion in there, uh, they're just going to use their special abilities kind of randomly uh, as your opponent uh, baits them out, and you'll take a lot of damage through recoil. Not only that, but the way uh, it was changed in patch 12.0 is that willpower no longer heals your life based on your boosted up life. It heals based off your you know your, your champion's base health. So uh, you're going to be taking a lot more damage through double edge and liquid courage than willpower can actually recover. And on top of that, people do have at least one point generally in despair and sometimes three points in despair. So um, you know your willpower healing wouldn't be able to match the damage anyway. So. Uh, an alliance war on defense, suicide masteries are absolutely terrible. Um, I, you, you can sort of get around as long as you're willing to pay a few units per match, uh, recovering your masteries here. Recovering now is, is free, but then placing the points back in, uh, it does cost some units. You don't have to repay the, the core cost, but, um, you know, for example, uh, picking up uh, glass cannon here, I'm pretty sure it costs, costs uh, you know, two units to, to pick that up or something like that. Um, and some of these, they, they can cost a little bit more than that. Um, so that is an option, but keep that in mind uh, that there will be some costs associated with that. Uh, if you do play Arena, 
then I do think it's it's better to um, still use the suicides and then drop them whenever you go to place your champions on defense uh, and then pick them back up again to keep doing arena. You'll you'll speed up your time so much that you'll actually come out with a net gain of, of, of units. So um, it, it's worth it. Um, Alliance War Offense. Now, Alliance War Offense... I've done many wars having suicides, and I've done uh, I've done many wars without having suicides as well. And I do think it's better to not have the suicides, but it's not so much better that uh, it's really going to kill your performance. You can absolutely still get through Alliance War on offense while having the suicide masteries. Um, and here's the thing about Alliance War on offense, guys: it, you don't spend that much time there. <laughs> uh, if you think about it, there's only what like five to, to eight fights or something like that, depending on which path you're taking, depending on how many fights you, you choose to take. Um, and it, that's that's really not that much. That's really not not that much. Um, how much time, how much time in total do you think you're spending on Alliance War in, in offense? Uh, we're talking like 15 to 20 minutes, right? So, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, three times a week. We're talking about 45 minutes to an hour every week. That's how much time you're spending in Alliance War. It really does not make up that much uh, of your of your gameplay. It seems like more. It feels like more because uh, it's an exciting thing. Alliance War is exciting. You, you get to strategize with your team. Uh, you're looking around to see how well your team is doing. Uh, you're looking to see how your defenders are doing against the opponent. Uh, maybe there's a little bit of trash talk going on. There's a lot more components to Alliance War other than just the fighting. Um, but you know, we're talking about 45 minutes to an hour worth of gameplay a week that uh, the suicides are having uh, a, a slight negative effect on you. So. It really not really not that big of a deal there in, in my opinion um, if I had the the option then I yeah I would not bring suicides to Alliance war but uh, what can you do there, there are some drawbacks that um, that you know the, the benefits still outweigh that those drawbacks so much in my opinion so that's my thoughts about the suicides that's how they actually work that's how uh, they work in different areas of the game and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video I'll be back with the next one that'll show you five different mastery builds that you can do uh, if you are interested in trying out these suicide masteries so until then guys take care